My name is Emily Leach, and I am the founder and president of the Texas Press Association, a nonprofit that started February 27th of 2015. The reason I started the T uh, what's now called the TFA, um, because we're all lazy and Texas Finance Association takes a long time to say, is because of some specific numbers. It is estimated, and it's a strong and pretty accurate estimation, that by the year 2020, 50% of our entire workforce in the United States will be freelancers. 50%. We already have about 56 million people in the entire United States, which is a part of our workforce, that's freelancers, independent workers, people that are working without a W-2, a J-O-B. So what is a freelancer? In my eyes, a freelancer is an individual that has a skill for hire. How, how do they hire that out, right? By task, by project, by hour, however, that doesn't really matter. The deal is that they're not specifically put on there, committed to one specific employer or client full time. That's, how, that's what a freelancer is. So why are we bringing this to you guys? You're all looking for jobs, which I get it. But the truth is, a lot of times people can find freelance work way faster than they can find a job. The other thing that I started, which all of you guys might want to go check out if you're on Facebook, is a Facebook group called Austin Freelance Gigs. That's where everything started. Everything that I'm doing right now started from this one group. So I heard a lot of talk this morning about IT stuff. So I used to be an exchange administrator. I used to be a database admin. I know the IT space very, very well. And I feel for all of you, because <laughs> I've exited it. But we have a lot of requests for IT help. And we do not have a lot of people in our group to meet those requests. So if you go to Austin Freelance Gigs, totally free, just go join it. The only requirement is that you live in the Austin area, and that area is a pretty gray line. <laughs> and uh, one of us or three or four admins will accept you into the group. Here's the great thing about the group. No sales are allowed. You're not allowed to sell to the, us and we're not allowed to sell to you. So it's a very safe place for freelancers to come and tell us what you do, come in and do an introduction, say, my name is Emily, I do X, let's just say I do website design, I really enjoy small projects, I do WordPress, whatever it is. Um, it isn't a place for you to come say, hey, I need work, give me work. That's not what we're there for. It's a community. If you're there, we assume you're there for work and we're going to help you get that. The other thing that you do is you just watch the group. People come in and provide gigs. They're like, hey, I need someone to, there was an iOS guy this morning, so we get these a lot, and I don't have an iOS guy. Um, I need an iOS mobile app created, and they may give some more detail. They may not, that may be all they put in there. It's your job then to go and get the detail out of them and make the connection. And if I know who you are and I see it, then I'll tag you. It's just been a really fun project. So that started January 2014. It's almost two years old. From that, last year, I was inspired to do something kind of a little crazy. I've been an organizer for quite a few TEDx events, actually one of the original ones in the entire United States. We grew up from nothing to being the largest. And I've been a freelancer almost my entire career. So July a year ago, I had this crazy idea when I was watching people in the Austin Freelance Gigs group communicate, connect with one, one another, get jobs, get each other jobs, and, and be able to ask questions of one another. It's like, wouldn't it be cool to go to an event where I could hang out with other freelancers? I don't care what you do, just to be able to hang out with other freelancers. And there wasn't one, so I created the Freelance Conference. And through the Freelance Conference came the Texas Freelance Association. Because what I found was people wanted even more camaraderie. They wanted more support. They needed that getting out of the vacuum and, and working with other people. So let's keep going. So what does the world of freelancing, these independent workers, mean to our economy? Well, just in the last year, 
we're up from $9 million. So out of our entire economic base that comes, that's created in America, $9 million of that was created by freelancers last year. This year, so far, we're at $16.6 million. We're a force to be reckoned with. That is a job career opportunity if you want it. If you're a person that enjoys being at home by yourself or enjoys you know, working on your own and being able to work with projects off and on, freelancing might be a good option. It's something worth looking at, even if you just do it part-time or as a stopgap until you get that job. Here's what I find. I find that I have a, quite a few freelancers that dive into this because they lost their job and maybe they are in IT. IT is a really hot spot for freelancing. And they can go fix that computer. They can build an iOS app. They can build these things while they're looking for a job. And then they're like, hey, this isn't that bad. This is actually kind of cool. I don't need a job. I can do this. And that's why this number is growing so fast. The other reason this, this is growing so fast is because a lot of companies no longer need as many full-time employees. So they'll bring in freelancers. You know, you may work 20 hours a week, you may work 30 hours a week, you may work the whole 40, but they want you part-time. It, it's at least a stopgap. It's another option if you're willing to do freelancing. So I strongly recommend that you, you think about it. You open your, it's a, I can't remember who it was that came up here and said, my mind is open. It's like, well, this is a good time to open your mind because the workforce is changing. I, like many of you, probably grew up in a household where my dad, um, my dad was the worker, mom took care of us, Dad um, retired at 30 years. Well, kind of. Because after he retired, it's like, oh, well, this is boring. So he went and started doing other stuff. So it's been 20 years of basically freelancing. It's a viable option. So what does it mean for businesses? It means more options, actually. So before, when businesses really weren't that open to the concept of freelancing, bringing in temporary help, they either went without it completely or they just hired a, a full-time employee that ended up losing their job because they really didn't have enough work for them. So now we have this intermediate space to where people can bring on more people and use them when they need them instead of bringing people on, laying them off, bringing people on, laying them off. So now we have companies that may have 10 people working with them. None of, none of them may be full-time. And they can use all those specialties when they need them. I can now work with 10 different companies. I don't have to work with just one. You know, we have this big thing in America called ADD, right? And I don't know that we are or aren't ADD, but it's still a fun little topic in that people call me ADD because I like to switch from one to the next to the next to the next. So if you're that type of personality, we like a lot of that different change in your life, again, freelancing might be a great option. A lot of the recruiting companies now have an entire section of their company where they recruit for freelancers. They also recruit for jobs. I saw a couple of recruiters up here this morning. Love them, wonderful, but a lot of them also have an entire segment of their business where they're just looking for people that do freelance contract work because they are now seeing a larger number of people in their target market, their businesses that they find um, talent for that just want contract help. Open yourself up for that. So these are the two support systems that we have in Austin for freelancers. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna say that freelancing is the easiest freaking thing you're ever gonna do in the world. But neither is finding a job, to be perfectly honest. So my entire year has been spent volunteering to build at least these two organizations and the Austin Freelance Gate. And we've now started a Dallas freelance gig and an opportunity to start helping people in, in Dallas. Freelancing can be lonely. Freelancing can be hard. Freelancing can be wonderful. Freelancing can be exciting. Freelancing can be a challenge if you're up for it. It allowed me to be a stay-at-home single mom. I owe everything to, to freelancing. It allowed me to travel the world. It allowed me to do just everything that I wanted to do in my life when I thought I had absolutely screwed my entire life up. Freelancing gave me a start over. 
and it can do the same for you guys. You can find me at either the Freelance Conference, it's on October 28th. You can also find me through the Texas Freelance Association. To, you know, reach out, shoot me a quick email. Um, Gail will be here as well. And are you ready to come up and go ahead and talk a little bit more about the association? So I'd like for you guys to, to give a, a round of applause, if you will, to Gail. Gail Maynard. Thank you. Can you hear me? So, yeah, I came here nine years ago and met Kathy, and she's just so dynamic and wonderful, and, and there were, uh, it was scary though, I came here from California, I didn't know anybody, and I, uh, I had money in the bank, you know, but I sort of, I just, I thought, no, I've got to go out and get the job job, so I took this temporary job, and it was supposed to be temporary, and um, I love the title that she gave this take a flying leap because I finally had to tell this employer that and <laughs> I'm, it was the best decision I ever made actually. I, um, you know, when you're looking for a job you can get panicky and you can take something that you know isn't right for you and you know you're not really going to be happy and you get stuck there and they need you and you've proven your worth and you're sticking with it and you just, and they chew you up and they, and, and it was, you know, it took me a long time. It took me six and a half years to leave because that paycheck is nice. But, and I thought, you know, I've always done freelancing. Ever since I was in my 20s, I had done contract work, different little projects. People asked me to do things. Uh, I do, uh, I, you mentioned this before, but I'm a graphic designer and a marketing professional, so a lot of branding the storytelling piece of it, the writing, the project management. There's a lot of different things that go into it, social media. So I thought, you know, I'm going to be looking for both. And I, when, I quit the, when I quit my job, I quit with nothing lined up because that job was so stressful I couldn't even get it together to look for another job. I was just, I just had money saved in the bank. That is one thing that I would recommend. <laughs> and highly recommend, you know, for reading all the Susie Orman. She's like, eight months, really? Come on, who can do that? So I had about four months of money saved up. I also had, and I don't, you know, I'm not saying I recommend this for everybody, but it worked for me. I had a Roth IRA. I have a Roth IRA. And I did take some money out of that in my first year of freelancing. It's been about um, 18, a little over 18 months now that I've been freelancing full time. And so I took a little money out of that. I had my savings. You start telling all your friends and family, you know, there are people that know you that don't have a clue what you do. And it's just great to go, you know, on Facebook and say, I don't know if you know this, but I would, I would really love to do some contractors, some side work. Here's what I can help you with. And, and that's the thing about networking that I learned as well is really appealing to how you can help somebody else first. And that, that always comes full circle. I feel like the karma that you build or something, it's like good mojo and it just keeps going. And, and then, you know, when you get those jobs, my focus has been so much about really connecting with the person. What are their needs? What are their goals? And doing an really you know, go, bending over backwards, actually, to, to make that, to build that trust. And I never even really thought of myself as a logo designer, but I went on a site called Thumbtack. You've probably heard of it. Have you heard of it? Yes? Okay. Any kind of work that you do, they are, they need those people on Thumbtack. That doesn't cost, um, it, it's, you, you paid a bit on jobs. And I recommend, like, just buy $100 worth of credit. I mean, 100 bucks, what is that? And, and just, you know, put, put that out there and then look at the jobs that come in. And at first, when you see them, you're like, there's no detail here. How can I even give a quote on this? So it made me think about, okay, what can I offer as a package kind of deal? I ha and you start out, hi, you know, I'd love to work on this project. I have this kind of experience. And here's... I'm, I'm going to make some assumptions about your job. Here's what I can provide for this amount of money that I quoted. So that you're very clear up front about what you're offering. And I got tons of jobs that way. 
and it started out with a lot of logo designs, which I always had a lot of trepidation about. It's not easy to figure out somebody's brand, you know, and, and uh, put it just into this little mark. But it grew from there because I thought, if they need a logo, they need everything. They're starting with, they're starting at the very beginning, they have nothing. So, and that's how it worked. And I would start doing all their branding, their collateral, their, um, and then, then now that's led to websites, which is really what I wanted to learn when I left my job. And it was the experience that I was lacking to get the job that I wanted was the, the very, the more technical digital piece. And so this has really provided me an opportunity to learn a lot. And you might find where your gaps are in your work history once you start realizing, you're like, oh, there's that thing that I need to know. And learn it and that you can add to your resume. You can always be looking for both and taking some of those contract jobs. Um, I also did other crazy things like drive for Uber. And, you know, I know Kathy's talked to you about making money on the side. And there are, um, you know, a lot of different ways to do that. There's a, there's a website that I love called Milo.co. It is really more for communications people. There's so much great information in there about making money on the side, connecting with people, and running your own business, which really freelancing comes down to like, you can just work alone and build a team of people that can help you with things, but maybe, you know, it's the step to, you know, going into business for yourself too. And you'll learn that as you go along, what's, you know, what you want to do. Um, I thought I would just do a little Q&A too and Emily could answer questions as well. Um, the, I, I wanted to say though about the Texas Freelance Association, what it's done for me is that the biggest questions that you probably have about freelancing are, well, how am I going to get clients? How, what about benefits? What about, um, healthcare, you know, all these things that are the stop you from doing it. So healthcare, um, I am paying the same amount through the, I just still call it Obamacare. Um, <laughs> and I'm grateful for it because if I were to get insurance on my own because of, um, well, I don't know, it was going to be like before Obamacare was developed. It was going to be about $800 a month, and there was no way. I've had a couple back surgeries, and you know, there was just no way. Now I pay about $125 a month, which is exactly what I was paying, even when my employer provided it. Um, that was my share. So that's been great. Um, the Texas Freelance Association fills in a lot of the gaps for um, some of those benefits. Um, they had. They have a jumpstart program that is amazing. There's four different Tuesdays where you get eight hours a day of, it's, yeah, four weeks in a row. And there's different speakers that come in. One guy came in and talked about taxes and contracts. One person came in and talked about retirement and how to manage your savings and you know, still think about retirement even though you're freelancing. You gotta put money away and helping you navigate all of that. Um, that program alone I think is worth about 400 bucks. To join the association, it's only... Right, you can do $6 a month and join it. And you get a lot of other perks, which I brought the perk sheet, my little cheat sheet here. Um, there's a lot of co-working spaces around town. Some people don't feel like they can work at home because their kids are screaming and there's, there's just too much going on. So these co-working spaces are a great option. Uh, the, some of the perks include some free time at some of these co-working um, places. There is a lawyer that came in that will, if you wanted to set up an LLC or you know, um, talk about your options for business, um, that he gives you a, 
30 minute legal consultation for free and uh, there's the Austin Young Chamber of Commerce, you get 25% off their membership. There's a CPA offering 15% off of all of her services. Uh, so there's a lot of great things that are offered through the association and one of the main ones is the collaboration and getting work from other people. So again, you know, if you can join that Facebook group that she mentioned. Yeah, that's the Austin Freelance Gig. But then there's another closed group. You have to be a member to get into that one. And uh, it has a ton of resources there for you. So do you want to do a little Q&A? Okay, it's your turn. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? In the back. I have a question for you that uh, looks like this is something about communication. What is it? Miller.co. Oh, uh, Milo.co. M-I-L-L-O dot C-O. And it is mainly for designers and communications people. It started out as like the graphic design blender or something, but it's really expanded and, and um, I would say HubSpot is another great one if you're in the communications field. Okay. Cool. Any other questions? There used to be Freelance Austin. Is that still exist? It does exist. And then Freelance Austin has a once a month meeting and they are primarily for communicators as well because they're a part of Women in Communications Austin. Oh. Right, and what I love about the Texas Freelance Association is it's any kind of service. So that's a great way to, you know, a lot of times you network with people that are in your same industry and you don't get work from them. It's great to brainstorm and all of that, but with our group you really do. Yeah, you have a question? I'm sorry, talk? Oh, okay. Um, I have to talk about the conference, are you kidding? <laughs> So we are less than three weeks out. Oh my God. So yes, the Texas, or Texas, I can't believe I did it. The freelance com um, conference is October 28th. Uh, tickets are on sale. Early bird is through, through Tuesday on the 12th, right? That's Tuesday? Yes. Okay. Uh, $112. I'll be more than happy if you want to send out an email. i be more than happy to give you a 10% discount on that so we can get it down to $100.80, I think, ish. It is at the Getaway Motor Club. So do you guys know where that's at? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows where that's at. Everybody's going to know after October 28th. So it is just, uh, just east of town. It is on the corner of Airport and crap. What is that road that starts? And Springdale. It starts with an S. <laughs> Springdale. It's right there on the corner of those two. And it, I will admit that it's in, a, it's in this white building that when you drive up to it, you're going to go, what the was she thinking? And you're going to walk inside and go, Oh, that's what she was thinking because it's super, super awesome. So it's got some really fantastic classic cars in it. They've just done a beautiful job on the inside. So one of the things I got out of TEDx is how to create an experience. So I wanted to create a conference that had an experience that educated people on the business of doing freelancing because that's what in TFA, that's my, that was the entire premise. Freelancers, all of you guys, you already know how to do your craft. You don't need me to teach you that. You don't need Gail to teach you. You don't need anybody to teach you your craft. You may need to know new things about your craft, but that's not me either. Everything that I do with freelancers is industry agnostic. It is about the business and the emotional <laughs> intelligence of running a freelance business. So, for instance, at the conference, we have a speaker that is coming and doing a workshop on project management, how to, project, how to manage your project visually, how to manage your, all of your projects within your projects, right? So you have the management of each individual project and the management of all of them, and the management of you, if you're like me anyway, that has way too much stuff on their plate all the time. We have someone that's coming in and talking about, what is your ge geographic target market? Here's what happens with freelancers. You move to a city or you start a business, you're like, oh, my target market is Austin. I live in Austin. Well, you know what's interesting is this gentleman moved into town from um, Silicon Valley. And he says, we don't think anything of driving all the way to the north side of San Francisco for a meeting. That's just what we do. So if you did that in Austin, you would be driving to Waco. 
you would be driving to Houston. You would be driving to San Antonio. And guess what you just did? You just added 8 million people to your target market. So if you're able to make, let's just say, a decent living on the million, two million people that we have in Austin, what would happen to your business, your freelance business, if you added another 8 million? Right? So I thought that was a really great conversation. We have a gentleman coming in and talking about how to create a growth strategy as a freelancer. The problem with being a freelancer is it's me, myself, and just a whole lot more of me. <laughs> and some days that's fun and some days it's not as much fun. So how do I grow that? How do I build it into being more? Right? How do I break out of the exchange of time for money? Because you've only got so much time and you can only charge so much money. So how can we change that? So he's going to talk to us about that. we got a guy coming in off of the East Coast that's going to be talking about how to increase your income, how to increase your rates, and how to feel comfortable about that. Here's the other issue that freelancers tend to have. Is it's like, oh, great, I'd love to start charging $100 an hour versus $75 an hour. And they feel great about it. Me in the mirror just had a really great conversation. We're feeling good about it. And the phone rings. It's like going, yeah, charge $75 an hour. Because we're, we're not comfortable with it yet. So how do you get comfortable with it? Or how do you even remove the hourly rate and turn it into a project rate? Right? So that's really the, the crux of everything with freelancers. How do you charge? How do you get paid? How do you take care of yourself? How do you take care of your business? How do you make it all work? Does that answer your question? And we have more people talking, but those are the ones that are my top of mind for me. That I get the most excited about. And I, I, Where is it at again? It's the Getaway Motor Club. So if you go to freelanceconference.com, I got super original with the name. <laughs> it was funny though, about two weeks ago I had a, I was talking to the person in a networking group and they were they kept asking me, I said, So what what's the name of the conference? I said, it's the freelance conference. And they're like, Oh, oh, that's the name of it. It's like, yeah. So what's the URL? Freelance conference. I, <laughs> <laughs> Keep it simple. And they're like, oh, you really, you really got it all? I said, yeah. I'm a super simple person. <laughs> and I wanted to mention something about the geographic area. Since I started, I have clients in California, Colorado. I even did um, a bunch of work uh, for a healing center in Panama. So, I mean, if you can work from anywhere and you have, you know, you're good about falling in love with people, emails, phone calls, you can do it. You can really wipe you can, into you the... Can absolutely, I've, had, I've had clients in Belize. I've had I, when I did search engine optimization, I never actually met any of my clients. Well, I made sure I met the one in Belize. I have to admit that. And <laughs> yeah, I, I made sure I went can. back in multiple times to, you know, take pictures. And I just wanted to make sure they were well taken care of. <laughs> you can write that off completely. That's one of the beautiful benefits of freelancing is when you learn the craft of writing stuff off, I call it lifestyle accounting. <laughs> My accountant's not completely happy with the term, but I love the term. But that's for a different conversation. Yes? So, Dale, did you, how did you find those far away clients, or how did they find you? Well, I'm originally from California, so I had my contacts um, in California, and I have a boss that I worked for um, forever ago. And he has called me throughout the years, and that's how the Panama one happened. Colorado referrals, so I'll just, yeah, yeah in, a, in a nutshell, referrals. One of my clients um, owed me money, and he was only 10 miles away. And I said, hey, can I come by and pick up that check today? And he's like, we moved to Florida. <laughs> I said, so, you know, uh, how about PayPal? So um, that's kind of how that evolved. And it does. I got a call from a, a friend that I know here in town introduced me to his friend, friend in St. Louis that needed a writer. And they, he wanted to talk to somebody that knew the freelancers. Phone, turn your phone off. No. And so he called me. And so then I went to my Texas Friends Association people, said, hey, who do I have out here that does this? And then I made the email introduction, and he wrote me back and said, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Thank you so much. So, and that's what I love to do. I, I love that connection. I love getting that email. It's like, oh, thank you so much. I love going to a network event and seeing people come up to me and say, all of my work this year came from you. I just, I love knowing that I made such a big difference in someone else's life. It's fun. Not much. 
paying my bills right now. Um, I'm just kind of getting started with the freelancing, and I'm, um, I guess the financial stuff is kind of overwhelming me. But would you recommend hiring an accountant first thing, or how, how should I? I don't have a lot of information on the website and meetings, um, but what would you recommend for just kind of getting the ball rolling with that? Do um, you want to take it? Or, I mean, I'm happy to. Go ahead, yeah. Okay. My two cents are is everyone's different. So you need to pay attention to what your comfort level is. My personal comfort level is don't hire anybody until you're making money. <laughs> Go learn it yourself. Because if you're not making money, you don't have a whole lot of accounting to account for. <laughs> right? So don't spend it until it's coming in. And I just did a talk out at the Art Institute to a, a huge group of students. And they said, what would your number one piece of advice be to us? And I said, well, you've all been sitting here living on, what, $20,000 a year for the last year or two going to school. So when you get a job next month or you get a freelance gig, keep living like you're living now. It's not killing you now. Do that for one to two more years. So let's just say you're making sixty five. dollars Maybe you're making $70,000 on an entry-level job. If you can continue to live that twenty dollars or $30,000 a year, you're now putting thirty dollars or $40,000 away. Now you have options. And so that's why I say don't, don't spend it. And I'm not, I'm not trying to do a sales pitch, but the Texas Finance Association would be a great place to start. Um, the Jumpstart program, I know the next one that's coming up, it's, it's free once you're a member. And we have volunteers that run the entire organization, so nobody gets paid. And just real quick. And then the next one will probably be in February, so you could sign up for that next Jumpstart class. And you can just come to some of the stuff that we, we do and talk to people. How did you get started? How did you handle it? Because everybody's different. And it's comfort level is, I, I just learned how to do it all myself. But I'm comfortable with that. And some people aren't. Do you have any as freelancers? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, we do. Um, he wanted to know if we had any accountants as freelancers. And we do. Um, actually, the one that I use, my favorite one, is a freelancer, and she does. So she was reading off the perks, and she's decided to give all TFA members a 15% discount, and she's cheap to start with, I think, mm -hmm. for an accountant. She's reasonable, yeah. Yeah, it's like, Melissa yeah, I think she's 50 bucks an hour yeah. without the discount, and mm -hmm. most, C and she's a CPA, so a lot of times you'll get a bookkeeper, which is fine, but then you'll need a CPA to still go over it, right? So she does the bookkeeping and the CPA work, and normally I would pay somewhere between 75 and 125 an hour for that. And I just love her to death. I mean, she's really great because she will do my creative lifestyle accounting. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also Fresh Books and Wave, and there's some you know different right. programs that can help you, um, you know, keep track of it. And then maybe you just meet with that person quarterly, so you're not right monthly. Exactly. Know? And so that's what I tell most of my newbie ones, especially newbie freelancers, is use. It's called waveapps.com, waveapps.com. Totally free. It's, it does everything a new freelancer is going to need, absolutely everything. And it is funded by Dell, Salesforce, you know, a bunch of big companies. So that's how they make their money, which is beautiful. And then it does a reconciliation. It does all the pieces that your CPA wants you to do. And they can, you can give them access to it. They can look at it. You can pull access away, that kind of stuff. And I, yeah, great suggestion is maybe quarterly or depending on how much money you're making, maybe do it twice a year. Right. Anything else? There's one other person. The question is the expansion of the freelancing population. You have been asking, right? And you thought about some applications and you did the network of the entire US. Yeah, U.S. right now is, a, is the second fastest growing um, population of freelancers. The U.K. is actually the fastest growing by about a half a percent more a year than we grow. Um, and I know a lot of people might think that it's actually, you know, India and some of these other countries that have a much faster growth of freelancers, but they don't. And the primary reason for that is, is let's just say you go to Upwork or you go to freelancer.com, and that's where you get a lot of your overseas freelancers. But what happens is you're actually getting one person, and they have 10 people that work under them, but they're employees, so they're not considered freelancers, right? And so I don't keep track nearly as, as much on the freelancing growth and statistics outside the country of the United States. So the numbers I showed earlier isn't Austin numbers. They're United States numbers. 
And they were just put out by Forbes this month, like last Tuesday, actually. Yes. It's the same. Uh, Freelancers are 1099. But they usually the little formulas that you charge 20 to 25% more than you would get as a regular uh, W4, uh, W2 um, uh, employee. Right. And so just to cover your expenses and your taxes and all of that. I do you do uh, have a little formula like that for we have a whole spreadsheet, oh, baby. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's so much more than that. I mean, I I wouldn't take the twenty five percent. I would just because there's so many other pieces involved. So in the jumpstart class, we do. We run people through an entire three worksheet three part worksheet. And in order to even start the first worksheet, you need to have your own personal budget. So what happens in this worksheet is we make you go through all of your business budget. You know, if you're going to have to replace that computer in a year or two years, let's say that computer is going to cost you $1,500 and it's two years away, divide that by 24 months and that's the number you need to put in there. You know, all of those numbers. So even though you may not need a graphic design help right now, it's worth going and talking to a graphic designer and say, I'm going to need your help then. How much should I budget for this project? And then again, calculate that out and put it in your budget. And then at the very bottom we say, how much do you need to live on? That's the, one of the other things freelancers do. They're like, oh, I brought in $3,000, my bills are $2,500, I'm up $500. But they don't calculate in or account for all the expenses of the actual business itself, because it does have expenses. And if you're a geek like me, you enjoy writing them off. You enjoy accounting for them, but not everybody does. And so we go through that, and then you take that number, and let's just say now your nut for the month isn't $3,000, maybe it's $4,800. Right, because now you know what all your expenses are. And now we're going to pull that over into the next spreadsheet. And the next spreadsheet is going to ask you a couple of questions. How many days off do you want this year? <laughs> How many days of sick days do you want? How much time every week do you spend doing admin work? So your first number up at the top is 2,080 hours. That's what you have available, right? Because that's what we're taught. Then you subtract out. The, all the hours for your sick time, all the hours for that vacation that you want to take, all the hours for the admin work, and guess what? You don't have 2,080 hours that you can charge for. You usually have about 1,400. And so then, 1,400 hours has to pay for that $4,800. So we figure out that number. So you take it to the next page, and the next page, I'm just going to make numbers up, so don't quote me on this. The next page says you have to charge $64 an hour to make your nut. But we don't stop there. What if you would like to have a profit margin? <laughs> There's a thought. There's a profit margin. I just pay our bills. What if we had a profit margin? So then you can play with that profit margin. Say you want a 35% profit margin. You put that in there, then it tells you what your, your hourly needs to be. And if you're not charging hourly, if you're charging project, you need to, you know, you just have to make that calculation. So yeah, we get pretty serious about it. <laughs> I have not done all that homework yet because, <laughs> you know, I mean, starting out, you know, you may have to, um, you know, try other things and, and, and you're trying to charge what the market will bear and what you think people will pay and, you know, I mean, I did very creative financing and um, yeah. Yeah, I got roommates, you know, I mean, I did what I had to do to, to make it work. But I'll tell you, the sick day part of it, I've never been sick since I started freelancing and I, know, I don't I get just sick feel yeah. so much I don't know just you know I yeah and and um, I feel like I got really clear on what kind of clients do I want and and then that really helped me attract those kind of people well I'm you're right you're clearer you're personally I'm not nearly as stressed most of the time you know I can actually get out and ride my mountain bike two or three times a week I can do some of the things so my life in general is better I mean I literally with the exception of a um, kidney stone, I've not been to a doctor in a hospital in 15 years. Right. So. <laughs> and it turns out if you drink water, you don't get kidney stones. Let's do that, Bob. Coke does not <laughs> constitute water. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. 
Thank you guys very much. I, I had a little closing thought that okay. I just, uh, the closing thought I just wanted to share is that you all have marketable skills. You all have talent that you can use right now. So even if you don't entertain any idea of becoming a full-time freelancer, you can put it out there to people and get some contract work, get some little side jobs, and it gives you hope. And that fuels your search overall for what you're trying to do. And, um, you know, I think when you're looking for a job or when you're freelancing, the biggest thing to keep in check is what's going on in my mind? What am I saying to myself about, you know, because it can get really discouraging. So just know that, you know, take that time to say, what am I great at? And write it down and focus on that. And then, and you know, that just kind of fuels everything that you're trying to do to make money. Thank you.